All right, looking good. All right, oh yeah. Black sun in the hizzle, all oh, but shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I'm gonna say the, oh, we ain't gotta get no, no disclaimer. No, yeah, we not in the studio, we live in the studio. That's right, we live, we yeah, live. Yeah, no disclaimer, everything we say is us. Everything we say is us, I love it, I love it, all right. Okay, we are here at the headquarters of Food Knives Bombs slash Cop Watch. Marvin, tell us, tell us where we at. Where are we so we're at the Down Community, uh, which is an intentional community for radical anarchist activists um, who do, and we run a bunch of different projects out of here. So okay. we got Food Not Bombs, which gets healthy food out to poor people um, in the neighborhood and throughout the city. We got Cop Watch, which tries to take a stand against police misconduct and brutality um, by preventing the police from being able to beat people up and arrest them unjustly. Uh, by filming them, by holding them accountable directly. Uh, we got projects that try to um, be in solidarity with prisoners, people behind bars, uh, by connecting with them and exposing the conditions that they're going through, and and various other organizing efforts um, that, you know, that the, the folks here are passionate about that connect to, you know, our vision for the world. Okay, okay. We got Earthworm. This is the first time I had both y'all on the same panel. I right, love exactly. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. And one of our uh, efforts that we're taking part in, uh, we're not leading it, but we're part of it is working to stop the Klan who are organizing a march and a rally in April at Stone Mountain. So anti-racist groups of all different stripes are going to come together in April um, and we're going to have a bigger rally and we're going to stop them from marching up to the top of Stone Mountain. Um, so they think they're planning uh, a rally at Stone Mountain, and then later that evening they're going to have a racist uh, rock and roll show mm. with different uh, skinhead-oriented... Um, white power? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> different white power bands. Mm. Um, and it's, it's really disturbing. One of the bands uh, was actually one of the former members of it uh, murdered six people in a Sikh temple um, before shooting himself. Um, and that band Definite Hate is rumored to be there at that at this show so, that's the name uh, of the band hate definite hate definite. so uh, definitely so they're clear about what they intend they're clear about um they're not just here to wave confederate flags they're here mm. to commit violence um so we need to show up and show out and make sure that uh everyone knows that we're not going to tolerate that wow and this is all this is all out atlanta.com and this is where they can Check that all out Atlanta dot com. Uh, ATL dot com. ATL dot com. Um, all out to stop the Klan and fascists. Four twenty three, two thousand and sixteen. Definitely, any progressive organization that is anti oppression, anti racist, should be a part of this. If you're in Atlanta, and and come together and let them know that this type of uh, rhetoric, this type of hate speech and and actions won't be tolerated by the peoples down here in Atlanta, at the very least. My whole thing is, what initiated it? What what made you guys, how'd you get hip to this? And what made you guys at the Teardown say, Teardown community say, hey, you know what, we need to be a part of this? Well, I, I think we've all been seeing lately in, in the media, nationally and locally, that white supremacy is on the rise mm -hmm. in this country. I mean, we're seeing the Trump campaign with the insane racist things that he's saying mm -hmm. about black people, about Latino people. Uh, we're seeing situations like the, the shooting that happened in South Carolina recently. Um, all the way to, you know, in Oregon, we got these crazy white militia people talking about taking over government mm -hmm. buildings. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those folks are involved in white secessionist movements, trying mm -hmm. to establish a white state in mm -hmm. the Pacific Northwest. And this is all, none of it's really new, right? Like, this has always been a part of America, mm -hmm. right? It's like a right-wing racist fringe. Mm -hmm. But it's on the upswing right now. And I think a lot of people who were kind of on the fence about that are becoming emboldened and started not to just talk about this, but to do stuff. You mm -hmm. know, we're seeing we're seeing murders being committed. We're seeing people taking over buildings. So well, so I think the concern is that when the Klan talks about they're going to march up Stone Mountain, that that this is a sign for them and a symbol for the people they're trying to reach mm -hmm. that that there's a new renaissance for white supremacy right. in mm -hmm. our society, and they're trying to signal that by returning to the place where the Klan started right. a century ago and right. saying this is the new, you know, this is what's happening now. Mm. Yeah, but one can say that what provoked this is the, like, you have the beheading of James Foley, 
you had the guy, the Muslim guy down in Texas shoot up. So you have a lot of, one can say that this is white defense. You know, I've heard people like J.P. Stoner and, and Tom Metzger say that, you know, you keep seeing America being attacked. And we're, now we're going to allow in Syrians come in. And, and so we're allowing a whole culture that's, I don't know, and, and you make a good point about, you know, Donald Trump, how he has a momentum. But he's feeding off of the ISISs and the, uh, uh, I don't know, the Al-Qaeda's and, you know, different organizations. I mean, what do you say? I mean, uh, San Bernardino, my hometown. You had, you know, I mean, there's this big old fight, you know, and I, I want to kind of talk about this too, how now you got people saying that the FBI is going after Apple. You know, they want to decrypt the phone. So, I mean, I've heard some of the arguments leading to this. I mean, they can say, well, things were calm, but now after you, from 9-11 all the way up till now, you have things, attacks that provoke it. Now, now yeah. white America is being threatened. I, that's now, definitely how they're trying to frame it, right? Right. Is, is white society, white identity is under threat, and we need to stand up to protect it. Okay. And, and, of course, that's just a nice way of saying that white supremacy is under mm. threat. Right. And I think a lot of white people are feeling that right now, especially, I think, most importantly, in the context of the Black Lives Matter movement. Right? Okay. In, in the context of, very recently, black folks are very powerfully um, moving to say, we're not gonna let, we're not gonna be treated this way anymore. Mm. And not only are we gonna like say that, but we are going to cause problems for your society. We're going to shut your cities down. We're going to get in your way. You know, we're right. going to be in your highways and your shopping malls causing problems until you give us freedom. Mm -hmm. And I think that terrifies a lot of white people and, uh, and can, you know, can cause a certain type of person to be drawn into this white power, you know, white mm -hmm. supremacy kind of ideology. And that's why now is such a critical time because people are starting to take sides in a real way. And we need to show that that, that hard white supremacy, racist, nationalist thing, mm -hmm. that's not the side you want to be on, mm -hmm. right? Like, right. That, that's not a powerful thing, that's not a glorious thing. And if you try to do that, if you try to march up Stone Mountain and wave Confederate flags and talk about the KKK, you're gonna be slapped down. Yeah. Like, that's what right. we need to show. And, and so that's why we've like, felt that this is an important time to organize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Earthworm? Yeah, no, I was, Sorry, my question was going to be, do you see with everything going on, do you see um, more people, and especially white people, uh, becoming involved in the movement, in the teardown community, the cop watch, or the, you know, the various organizations that are going on to uh, educate and empower the masses of the people? Do you see more of an influx of, of, of uh, people coming in, and especially white people coming in, to this understanding as opposed to the white supremacist and the hate rhetoric that's that's being espoused out there? I think you see you see growing uh, input in both sides uh, mm. because I think there is, as Marlon was pointing out, a polarization happening in society. So people are taking sides and uh, we're getting more of a rift in society. And you can look at the causes of that. You know, you could say, well, Facebook allows us to only see uh, ideas that we agree with. So you're seeing more of a uh, uh, more of the extremes um, mm. of people isolating themselves, but definitely we've been getting um, an influx of people. The the Black Lives Matter movement has, as Marlon said, created a renaissance of new people um, being willing to stand up and speak out. Whereas before, maybe um, people felt so isolated that they thought, well, you know, I hate it that the cops are killing a black kid a month in Atlanta, mm. but uh, you know, maybe I'm the only one, or maybe you know, because we were going to these rallies in 2011 when they would, um, you know, they would kill Black mm. Kid a month. And it would be like 20 people at these rallies. Right. It's kind right. of a downer. And that, I think, is, I think something that Marlon was talking about was uh, the way that you feel when you participate in these rallies and whether it feels like a victory, whether it feels um, like you end up powerful, mm. has a lot to do with whether that movement builds strength and whether it goes on. So I think our work is to make the things that we do feel good and feel powerful right. and make the things that the white supremacists do not feel that way. And as Marlon said, part of it is slapping them down. Mm -hmm. Part right. of it is not letting them have this narrative of like, oh, we're the, the few, the brave, the martyrs. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, just to, to show them how 
truly weak and silly and isolated that they are. So mm. that the people who are maybe on the sidelines thinking about like, well, should I, you know, join this? Look at it and they're like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to face those consequences or I don't want to look like that. Mm -hmm. And it's also an opportunity for, for us, all of the various forces you're talking about, progressives, radicals, mm -hmm. revolutionaries, all of these different people to recognize our collective strength. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times we're, we're like focused on our own things and we don't really recognize how many people actually do flat out oppose this kind of message. Right. Um, and, and this gives us an opportunity, you know, all throughout the South. We're, we're, we're looking for a, a regional convergence here to sort of bring all the forces in all of the Southeast U.S. to Stone Mountain to, to symbolize and express that racism in the South is over. Mm -hmm. That's not right. part of what the South is anymore. Maybe it was once, and, you so, know, that's... We, so the we South should not rise that. again. <laughs> it's not happening, right? <laughs> right, right? That's over, right? Okay. And I think we can communicate that yeah, and, right. and make ourselves feel more powerful, too, mm -hmm. and recognize the force that we actually have. What about the people who would say, you know, you have to be objective. This is the arena, you know how we get out. What about the people who would say uh, they have read the First Amendment right, the right to right. freedom of speech and the right to um, assembly? What What would be your response to those people who would state that. And you and you have groups out there that state that. I mean, I like the Bundys. They yeah. like Finnegan, you know, the, the, the rancher in Nevada. You mm -hmm. know, I think they made some very, uh, you know, I think they were, they were battling over, you know, cow grazing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I think the rhetoric being used. Now, I agree with what you're saying, Marlon, about the old, you know, the goddamn Negroes and the Mexicans. A lot of them don't use that rhetoric no more. You know, I, I remember I was going down, and shout out to Misty, I was going down to a rally they were doing. It was the Klan on one side and the, uh, I guess the Israelis on another side. But I was going down the parking lot. I parked my car, and I was going down, and when I went through, they were all Klan members there. Whoa. And I was like, okay, so, you know. Like I'm on the wrong side of the picture. No, no, no. He's like, look, brother. No, you know, we're not racist. You nah, know, we, and they quit this rhetoric. I'm like, yeah, you know, we, we just here for jobs. We're not the same clan, you know. We're, mm -hmm. and, and I was like, you know, I'm like, why are you trying to convince? I mean, I was just like, okay, I'm just listening to him. And I, but like I said, I was kind of stunned. But the guy that was talking, obviously, he was wearing a white, red robe. He was in white. And the mm -hmm. other guy was wearing I guess he's and one guy was wearing the black one, so these were high rank. Yeah, the high, there was what the, the the dragons and the wizards and all. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah, right, right. The high rank. So a lot of them use rhetoric. I mean, you got the Minutemen that have black people participating now, and I think they're trying to use a lot of the well, you know, we Americans, you know, you don't want people coming here, and I guess he thought I was a Christian. You I know, think, and, but you know what though to say that, and and not to cut you off, son, I think that that's where education is going to come into it because a lot of uh, the, the people out there are with you know like what I like to call them constitutionalists, right? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. so you have some of them actually out there that are fighting f against um, government, larger government and government intervention, and right. sometimes they get tossed in the mix with the white racists and the white supremacist movements. It's kind of what I like in uh, you know where people toss in thinking that all Jewish people are Zionists. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? But right, you right. have Jewish people, then you have the Zionist movement, and there's two different, and that's two different things. Oh, it's just like thinking the black nationals are black supremacists? Right, exactly. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? It's like thinking the, the Panthers are a hate group type right, of thing. Right, right. So um, I think one of the, the things, a lot of it is, is going to come in to uh, education of the people. But I still would like to hear that. What would you say to those people who say, well, you know, it's just ex exercising their constitutional right. right um, I've seen even read, boy, I forget what year this was, where they had the uh, a Jewish lawyer from the ADL, from the Anti-Defamation League, defending a white supremacist. You know what I'm saying? Saying that he has this, this freedom to say these things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so he, you know, he was defending them. I mean... The, the first thing that I would say to that is that freedom of speech in American society is a lie. Yes. It does not right. exist. Yes. And the people who say that it exists and should be protected are fooling themselves mm -hmm. because we didn't have it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And we can see this in the way that the police deal with different types of demonstrations, mm -hmm. right? That's right. So um, when we have um, 
leftist demonstrations or like radical anti-authoritarian demonstrations, mm -hmm. police are incredibly aggressive. They arrest people who didn't break the law. Mm -hmm. They That's do right. everything that they can to conspire and suppress that movement because the police are opposed to it. Mm -hmm. The government is opposed to it. Um, meanwhile, uh, when the Klan marched on the Capitol in what year was that? Like 2011, 2013? Um, the, Klan, the, Klan, the Klan and neo-Nazis marched mm -hmm. on the Georgia state capitol um, some years ago, and people came to lawfully, civilly protest. And them, we will right? run along. Um, and the, the authorities came out mm -hmm. and basically acted as bodyguards yeah. for the Klan, protected right. them. They went so far to protect them that they actually arrested somebody for exercising their constitutional rights. Right. This person, all they, the only crime they supposedly committed is having a sign protesting Nazis, mm -hmm. and they were arrested. So, the the free speech thing to me seems like kind of a distraction, right? Mm -hmm. A way of like celebrating an ideal that never really existed. The reality of the situation is that the American government protects white supremacy and persecutes people who try to move against that. Mm -hmm. And the only real solution for that is for us to develop enough power that we are able to move against white supremacy despite that so just despite that repression we can't look to the government to solve this problem for mm -hmm. us to respect everybody's rights the right. government never will right if we want our rights respected we have to develop the power to do it ourselves Absolutely. wait a minute Absolutely. here Martin. are you meaning to say it. like the boy that shot the boy what was the name the boy shot them people down in South carolina uh they went into the room yeah do you mean, man, just because our officers take him to Burger King that we support white supremacy? <laughs> right. I mean, doesn't the boy was hungry there? Yeah, he needed a burger. He needed a burger. Okay. No, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. No, I mean, what you say? No, when when you, when you look at something just so blatant like that, you know, taking him to the Burger King, and then you know people on social media reading into it, and once, oh well, he was, you know, making a big. I guess we call them apologists for it, mm -hmm. but. I mean, well, and there's a lot like that. That makes me think also of what you were saying before about your encounter with the Klan, where they're right. like, oh, we're not that bad. Right. Right. We can right, be right. decent. We can be civil to each other. Mm. And I think this is another lie, right? The idea right. that Absolutely. that like white supremacy and the ideas surrounding it are something that can be part of civil dialogue, mm -hmm. right? That we can sit down and talk about, you know, these questions of like, well, maybe people who aren't white are animals. Let's debate. You know, what are mm. different opinions right. on this? That's not part of civil debate. If you're bringing that to the table as, you know, part of your ideology, you are insane. And, mm -hmm. and there, there's nothing to talk about. Mm -hmm. And, and I trying think the, to erase the very real history of violence that's behind that. These aren't just words that people are saying. This right, is supporting right. a system of very real violence, mm -hmm. you know. And when we allow that kind of dialogue to come in and we exclude the other voices that are opposing that, that does strengthen the prison industrial complex and all of these things that, you know, the police um, murders and everything that, that do have very real concrete impacts on people's lives. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, you know, I, I, um, there was one journalist that said, you know, there was uh, in the Nuremberg trials where they were prosecuting mm -hmm. the Nazis mm -hmm. that the, the German defense lawyer actually used a case in, in Virginia, eugenics mm. law, that they mm. have in books here to mm. defend wow. their officers. I was like blown away when I heard that. I'm like, wow. But yeah, they, yeah, I didn't, yeah, yeah. yeah. It didn't surprise you? Yeah, no, nah, it didn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, they it, it, modeled their, their eugenics program off of the turn of the century, the um, mm -hmm. early 19th, right. early 20th century eugenics program here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, because the, um, you know, one of the, uh, Charges was, you know, they were they were sterilizing uh, what they call the undesirables or the imbeciles, and but the, yeah, the, the German lawyer he said, hey, you, you guys do it in America, so how can you guys persecute these guys when it's on your books? Like it's still, uh, I don't mm -hmm. know when they overturned that eugenics, but they said eugenics was like the norm in America. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find still a lot of sterilizing people in the seventies. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> just just they were sterilizing people in California not too long ago. But you, I, I, you'll find it to me. You'll find a lot of world powers that say that you know that that point out the hypocrisy of this country when they say, "How can you come and condemn us for um, alleged human rights violations when you turn around doing the exact right. same thing?" You know what I'm saying? We have political prisoners. We have people executed and murdered 
uh, for no other reason than their political views and beliefs, murdered in the streets for no other reason than their ethnicity, you know, the same thing with the Shia and the Sunni and, and, and things of that nature. So I think that that's what they're saying. They're saying it's the biggest hypocrisy the world is looking at, and a lot of it is backfiring in this, um, in this country's face. But uh, my thing with tackling the Klan after tackling, what do, in this whole demonstration in the all-out ATL, definitely check it out on uh, the 0423 was that April? Yeah, yeah, April, April, 23rd. April 23rd, 2016. Definitely all the organizations come out, man. This is something we should be a part of. But what are your hopes uh, that this will accomplish to, you know, short term and long term by bringing this, you know, this awareness or this action or being a part of this action? I think the I think the most positive thing that can come out of it um, from, from my perspective is the recognition of our power, like mm. I was talking about. This, the, the Klan is a pretty minor aspect of white supremacy as a system, mm. as a society. But I think recognizing the power that we collectively have to take a stand against mm -hmm. it can set us up for taking the next step. And, okay. and maybe the next step is against ICE, right? Or maybe the next step is against APD. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Maybe the next, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's lots of other forces that exist to perpetuate white supremacy. But before we can move meaningfully against any of them, we need to recognize our power. Mm -hmm. And I think this is an opportunity for us to really find out what is our capacity? You know, what can we really do if we all decide that we've had enough of this system? Okay. And I think that this is a good opportunity to do that because this is something that we can all pretty much agree on Right. Um, you know, we may right. not see eye to eye on Israel. We may not see eye to eye on, you know, whether you're going to vote Democrat or whether you're going to, um, you know, not vote or this or that. But this is something that we can all be united behind. And if we can draw those connections now and, you know, at least show up to demonstrate together, you know, whether or not we agree on tactics or anything else, um, then we have that structure there for the next time that we need to show out right. and the next time, you know, as we've been pointing out, uh, white supremacy is building, this radical, um, extreme, overt white supremacy is building, so that next time may, may be soon. So mm -hmm. we, should, we should start building those connections. Now, I'd like to uh, mention strategy, because I know, now Marlon mentioned about how, you know, you go to rallies and, you know, the white supremacists are protected, we go there and then you know we're kind of like oh we, <laughs> you coughed the wrong way we're gonna arrest you you know <laughs> right, right. Stone Mountain now you know I live in Stone Mountain now a lot of people don't know I just discovered recently that Stone Mountain is not uh, ran by the state but the Daughters of the Confederate is a privately owned uh, you don't like the park. Yep. So the, okay. the park itself is public. Now. It okay. used to be. Yeah, that's that's the origin of it. It used to be privately owned. It was donated to the state in order to become a permanent memorial to the Confederacy. Hmm. And and so the state owns it mm -hmm. as a memorial to the Confederacy, which is even a little more twisted. It's in disturbing. My yeah. Hey, Brick, yeah. So the daughters of the Confederate had nothing to do with Stone Mountain as of today, right? As of today, they do not own it. But uh, but that was the the it originally I believe was property of some kind of Confederate group, mm -hmm. but it was donated to the state. To and the Confederate group began the carving of the Confederate generals. They got Lee's face on there, but then they ran out of funding. So mm -hmm. the the carvings of the Confederate generals stopped until the Civil Rights Movement, when the state took over it, and then they funded wow. the the rest of it. So this so this was okay. a direct an obvious reaction to the power that was building the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. which I think we can draw a parallel to today in with the Black Lives Matter movement um, and the reactions that we're seeing from white supremacists mm -hmm. in being like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's build our power too. Let's, let's make these symbols and uh, wave right. our flags and everything. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, that's heavy. That is heavy. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, I think we got to be careful ab about, you know, um, setting the KKK and neo-Nazis up as an independent force, right. you know, that's right, off on right. their own right. being wing nuts. Right. Like, we got to recognize that they are hand-in-hand -hand with the state, state. with Absolutely. the police and with all of these repressive forces. Mm -hmm. And when we take a stand against them, we are taking a stand against that's all of state. those forces. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, wow. So uh, let's go back. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, teardown community and some of the activities that you guys have been involved in and how long you've been around. And I definitely want to give out some contact information for people who like to be. So tell us a little bit about the teardown community and all the other 
little things you have going from it, foods, not bombs, cop watch, and things of that nature. Food Not Bombs. Uh, Food Not Bombs is a free meal that we do every Sunday in Woodruff Park on the corner of Edgewood and Peachtree. Uh, and that's a free meal that anybody can show up to, anybody who's hungry, anybody that wants to meet other activists and uh, network um, and show up against basically capitalist waste mm -hmm. and militarism. It's called Food Not Bombs. Because right the idea is let's put our time and resources um, and energy into feeding hungry people, not into bombing people, um, and that will be more of the kind of world that we want to see. Mm. So um, so Food Not Bombs, every Sunday, 2.30, Woodruff Park, show up, say hi. Um, we do a little impromptu drum circle every week. Okay. So, uh, um, and then you're more than welcome to come back and help us do the dishes also, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. if you're so inclined. <laughs> so that's one project. Uh, so another project uh, that operates mostly out of the teardown is Cop Watch. Mm -hmm. talked a little bit about that. Um, what we try to do is take direct action against police repression. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of different efforts that are happening all over the country now um, to try to reform the police. Right. Um, and, that's, and that's a beautiful and important thing. Mm -hmm. But really what we're interested in with Cop Watch is to figure out how people who are on the street in the communities that mm -hmm. are directly affected by police repression have the tools that they need to confront that themselves mm -hmm. um, because often it's the people who are in the neighborhoods who are targeted by the police who are you know getting stopped every day on their way home from school these are the people that know best how mm -hmm. to address these things um, so what cop watch seeks to do is um, educate people about how to film the police on the street so okay. that right. when you get stopped you know how to assert your rights and protect yourself from the police um, and when your friend or your neighbor or other people in your community are being targeted by the police you have a way to intervene directly, mm -hmm. to, to record that cop, to collect evidence, to be able to document what they're doing. Um, and that gives us power in a variety of ways. Um, right. It can help us to um, get that cop to leave right away because he knows he's doing something he shouldn't mm -hmm. be. And he's just going to get out of there. Or it can help to protect that person in court later. Mm -hmm. um, we had an incident not too long ago where uh, a young man was uh, arrested and beaten by the police in mm -hmm. this neighborhood. Um, he had like blood pouring out of his head, um, 17 years old. Cops arrested him and charged him with felony aggravated assault on a police officer mm -hmm. to justify the brutality against him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was facing five year minimum. Damn. Uh, but the fact that there was footage recorded of what had actually happened was all that was needed. Turn that over to the DA, the charges were dropped. Mm -hmm. that's what I'm about. So that's a kind of power that you don't need a fancy lawyer for, you know, you don't need to have politicians in your corner. Just this is a power that can be exerted right. on the street. Mm -hmm. And we want to get that out to as many people as possible. So what we do is we do this work ourselves, filming mm -hmm. the police, and we also give trainings on how you can do it. Okay. So um, there's one, I believe, coming up on March 5th that's going to be here at the Teardown House. Okay. And, uh, and folks can get more information about all those things at our website, which is Cop Watch. Of course, I had to know, do you guys have like a donation for people that may want to donate cameras or maybe different types of technology mm -hmm. to yeah yeah absolutely oh that's what i'm talking about okay. get in touch. yeah definitely definitely get in definitely get in touch now here's <clears throat> the question i have because you and i we were talking a little bit before we got on uh camera before we started the show we we're talking about you was here about like six years this is for anybody that knows the atlanta area knows the edgewood area is predominantly black and everything like that how were you received in the community being you know being, you know, white brothers and sisters out there and in a predominantly black a, a neighborhood. How was that? Well, what, what's what been happening in this neighborhood is rapid and aggressive gentrification. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. and and the black folks and poor folks who've been in this neighborhood for a long time, they know the score. They okay. know what's happening and they know that they're the target. They're the people who are to be moved out. Mm -hmm. And so, understandably, when, when those folks see white people show up in their neighborhood. Especially with cameras. Right. right. The, the, their initial reaction is going to be, the, what are these people doing? Mm -hmm. Are they snitches? You know, are they here trying to do some kind of neighborhood patrol situation where they're trying to get people locked up or mm -hmm. cause more trouble? Um, so a very important part of the work that we do is not just filming the cops, but being in dialogue with the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the work that we do is just walking around and talking to people and finding out what their experiences have been mm. with the police or distributing food or other kinds of things that can help people in other ways. Um, basically just to express what side we're on, mm. right? Because a lot of times 
it can be taken for granted that, right. that all white people are okay with mm. the police state that we find in black communities and that they support this kind of gentrification. Um, and it's very important for white folks not just to sort of disagree with that, mm -hmm. but to actively take a stand and, and, and forcefully show, you know, through your actions and your, your open words that you oppose that. And in a lot of ways, it is easier for us to do that because, you know, I don't have to fear as much um, of myself getting beat up and, you know, mm. charged with bogus felonies and all this stuff because of white privilege and in part also because of the track record that cop watch has established mm. now the cops are a little bit afraid since we sued them they're a little bit more afraid to mess with us so uh so we do have that luxury of being able to do that somewhat more safely while at the same time we do want to um you know show that there are, there are safer ways to do it you mm. if you do it in groups if you do it with another right. camera um then you can be safer safer um regardless of what privileges you may or may not have mm. yeah. Man, I, oh, no, go ahead, Jerry. No, I didn't have anything. I, was, I mean, I like it. Yeah. I, like it. I stumped you. That was yeah. it. You did. Yeah, no that was it. Right, right, right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here listening. So and let, that's me, what's let me bring it around to um, so, so these projects that we've talked about, mm -hmm. um, they, they stand on their own in terms of they have pragmatic direct effects okay. uh, on on people's lives, on our lives and also on the people that we organize with. And, and I think that's a principle behind a lot of the work that we do mm. is it's political, but it's not only political. It's right. also practical. That's right. mm -hmm. um, it, it that's has, important. You know, it yeah. shows people that that politics and engaging in, you know, direct action and self-organization can can have a change on your daily life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so another project that we do that's kind of like connected into that general concept is uh, the Anarchist Black Cross, which is, uh, which is solidarity with prisoners, people behind bars. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yes. So um, the Anarchist Black Cross has existed for a long time in Atlanta, and we started, uh, so let me back up. In 2010, there was a massive statewide prison strike that um, shut down prisons in Georgia, um, and it was a really big deal. And there were a lot of reprisals, of course, against the prisoners that took part in that because the last thing that the prison administrations want is for news to get out about how poor those conditions are and how many laws they're breaking. Um, so in 2012, uh, some of the people that were involved in that 2010 hunger strike and, and some other new um, faces took part in another hunger strike um, to partly demand that, you know, fair treatment and um, in response to those uh, reprisals. So we began writing different prisoners um, that were a part of that in 2012. And since then, and they started um, sending us pieces that they'd written, mm -hmm. like here are what the conditions are like, here are, you know, my thoughts on all different things. Um, so if you go to atlblackcross.org, you can see uh, those pieces. Um, but what happens when you write to one prisoner and say, you know, send me your send me your articles send me your poetry they get their friends to send you too so right. now um so i'm i met kelvin stevenson who was a part of the 2010 strikes um was immediately thrown into solitary confinement um and lived in solitary confinement for five years hmm. um after that 2010 strike um but stayed strong the entire time uh so i started writing him in 2012 and then he was moved from that prison, the diagnostic prison, to Valdosta prison, um, where he immediately started organizing there, um, you know, and got other people to start writing me. And now there's a whole bunch of letters coming from Georgia State Prison, like, look at what's going on in this prison. You know, they don't let us flush the toilets. They don't give us anything to clean with. We don't get showers on the regular. Laundry only happens every couple months. You wear the same jumpsuit for months. The food comes through these... Uh, this hole in the door that's covered in rust and caked in dirt and dirt falls in the food oh, as they come through. Just mind-blowing stuff. So if, I do encourage people, um, if you're interested, to go to atlblackcross.org and read those first-hand accounts mm -hmm. of what they go through there. But, um, but the thing that I think is amazing about that is just from writing to one or two people in 2012, got all these different connections. Um, and we can learn about all these different prisons across the state and similar things that are going on there mm -hmm. because of all the different uh, people that we met that way. Now, is there, is there any design to turn this into a national movement 
or is it just you know right now just um, confined to Georgia? There has there can we? Well, don't um, there, don't divulge too much. There has there has been talk about taking uh, prisoner resistance national, mm. um, and I, I think more and more folks uh, throughout the nation on the inside are beginning to to link up and to to recognize. Yeah, we've got organization and consciousness locally. Um, but we're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, so we saw that in Georgia mm -hmm. regionally, um, all the prisons went on lockdown yeah. in the whole yeah. state, uh, which is pretty profound when you think about what the, the constraints that these people are organizing right. under, right. The, you know, that they were able to make this happen statewide. Mm -hmm. um, same thing's been happening in Louisiana and Alabama. Um, and, and as these connections get established through cooperation between people on the outside, corresponding with prisoners, mm -hmm. prisoners corresponding with each other, and these networks being developed, right. the capacity for national resistance, shit for international resistance, mm -hmm. I think begins to develop. And, and I think we're getting to that point and, and folks should be on the lookout for that. I think that people who are on the outside who are not dealing with the prison industrial complex directly, mm -hmm. the most important thing that we can do is to develop those connections. Write to some prisoners. Yeah. Just open those lines of communication so that when something does start to happen on the inside, mm -hmm. whether that's abuse or powerful resistance, people know folks on the outside that they can communicate with. Mm -hmm. They know an address exactly. or a name or a phone number that they can get at to be like, hey, this just happened. People need to know, right? Mm -hmm. And like, get the word out. means the world to somebody on the inside. So yeah. that, I mean, one letter... I don't think that we on the outside can fully comprehend what that one letter can mean to somebody who's on the inside, who somebody, you know, somebody just killed himself in a cell, a few cells down mm -hmm. from one of my pen pals, you know, and he mm -hmm. wrote to me about that. But having the connection to somebody on the outside to be able to, to know I'm not completely, somebody knows about me in here, I'm not completely alone. If something were to happen, someone would know, and I have someone that I can reach out to so this isn't all just happening inside, you know, this like shut off, isolated thing. I think that means the world to people. It, so I think if you have it in you to write to some of these guys, go to that website, atlblackcross.org, read their different pieces, and write to, if one of them speaks to you specifically, write to them. It's their name, their prisoner number, mm -hmm. and the address of the prison. So, and there's also a tab that's uh, right to a prisoner that you yeah. can click on and choose one of those. And absolutely, and you couldn't have said it better, man. Being having been behind enemy lines like seven years, um, it's it's real. And my mother used to write; she used to put Mister in Kruma on it. And and I used to say, "Why do you always say put the Mister on it, Mom?" And she said, "Because I know you're getting tired of being called a number. So when they call your name for mail, they will have to call you Mister." So I always remember, you know, to keep that touch with humanity because you're absolutely right, man. The conditions in here, what I'm hearing conditions haven't changed since I've been in there and it is man deplorable. I can't even words don't even describe unless you've been there. It really is deplorable. Um, but one of the things, so y'all right. And definitely talking to, you know, speaking directly to the black community, the African community here in America, man, you know, you got somebody in your family behind bars. Y'all know how it goes down, man. So you already know. So know that you're not alone and that if you can get this information to them to hook up with organizers or whatever's happening in there, hook up. So check it out again. What's that website? Anarchist. ATLBlackCross.org. Okay. ATLBlackCross.org. ATLBlackCross.org. Check that out. Get in touch with your loved ones, your people's peoples who have peoples locked up. You know what I'm talking about. I'm speaking our jargon, so you dig where I'm coming from. Definitely get involved with that. One of the things that I like to go back to, and I don't know if you can talk about it, you were talking about since you sued the police, what type of repression or suppression have you come under doing the type of work that you do? I'd be interested in, in, in knowing that. And how did you weather the storm? Because I know when it came down, it came down. Well, uh, the, the project that we face the most repression related to is definitely Cop Watch, mm -hmm. because that's the project that involves most directly confronting the, the repressive apparatus of the state, the, mm -hmm. the police. Um, and and sure, I mean they have uh, they've threatened to arrest us. They've put the pressure really hard on us to stop doing what we're doing. Um, they've physically assaulted us. Um, 
But ultimately, I, I think a lot of that was kind of, a lot of the questions of what they could get away with doing to us was cleared up mm -hmm. once we filed a lawsuit against them mm -hmm. um, and, and won. They were forced to settle with us um, and they had to change their policies. Right on. They, there was local media stories on all the networks about what had happened. Um, and I think that sent a pretty clear message to them that they, they can play with us, they can toy with us, but it's probably not going to be worth it mm -hmm. because we're connected up enough to other people who have our back, you know, who support us, um, that if they try something without, you know, being really sure about it, it's not going to end well for them. Right. right. And um, this happened in the context of other lawsuits as well. There was oh the God. Eagle lawsuit that was a huge right. embarrassment and scandal. Um, and a friend of ours uh, also sued the cops for uh, when they arrested her for filming or taking photos of them beating her neighbor. So, uh, so that mm. caused them to have to also settle and um, make some more stricter rules allowing people to film. So while it is dangerous to film the police because that, they're not exactly in favor of it, mm -hmm. in some ways you are safer if you come to the situation as, you know, at least in Atlanta, because here is where these protections uh, have uh, gotten strengthened through these lawsuits. If you come as, I'm just here to film, I know I'm allowed to do this, you know you're not allowed to stop me, mm -hmm. um, type of an attitude. And I mean, we've had, we've had cop watch activists ar arrested since then mm -hmm. uh, for filming the cops. And um, a big part of that is just being organized to support each other, mm -hmm. to have each other's backs. So when somebody gets locked up, we know immediately that it happened. Uh, we got folks to be able to track them, to, to know where they've ended up and to bail them out as soon as possible. Um, we've got funds that are set aside to make sure that they're going to have an attorney, mm -hmm. you know, that they're going to be represented. And we no charges have ever stuck, right? Mm -hmm. Like, people have been arrested, but, you know, nobody's ever been convicted for filming the cops mm -hmm. within our organization. And I think that's that that looks different for different organizations and for different people who are taking right, action. Right. But, but the, print, the, the lesson that I take from that is that we have power when we watch each other's backs mm -hmm. when we're organized to stand up for each other and support each other and that's something that we need to expand out you know to more and more people to be I able like to support that. each other i like that because i was thinking maybe having uh spanned out to you know the legislation may you know keep an eye on that you know make sure they don't try to sneak some type of bill to counteract that so yeah i think you know what you guys are doing a great thing I'm, my question is do you guys maybe look into expanding sending somebody into the you know house and just kind of keeping an eye on things you know well from my perspective i don't think that we're going to get justice from within the legislative system right. any okay. more than we get justice from within the judicial system mm -hmm. okay um, i i personally feel that these systems are stacked against us yes. they're designed okay. to exploit and abuse us mm -hmm. and um it's not really worth the effort okay. to to try to 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 try to be doing that work there are people who are doing that work and, okay. and that's fine. I, I think if that's where they feel called to do, then that's what they should do. But um, I, I think that the most infor important forms of power for us to build are, are the concrete ones, the ones that operate on the streets, that, that work bottom up, you know, that start with the people who are most affected and, and give them the power directly to change mm -hmm. the way that their lives are. Okay. Right. No power in the hands of the people, man, right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got about what, five more minutes. Okay. Man, I, I love it. In these five minutes, let's make sure that we get this contact information out here. And again, we're sitting with Marlon the Earthworm from the Teardown community. It's an honor. I've heard so much about the Teardown, man. So it's, thank you for the invite to be able to come in. And I always love getting in the field out of the studio and talking to, you know, um, revolutionaries and progressives and, and, and people that are trying to make a change within the community and amongst the masses of people. So I'm honored to be here, man, and thanks for the invite again. Absolutely. Or for where we had okay. each of you on the show. But in these last couple minutes, is it something you like to address the uh, viewers with or anything? Well, let's get all our Facebook and yeah, all, let's get yeah, all, all that information out there. Real talk. Uh, you can friend the Teardown on Facebook. Um, it's teardown.community at gmail.com. We also got a blog going on. It's theteardown.org. And we, um, Copwatch is on Instagram. It's just Copwatch. Sounds easy. Oh, is it Copwatch Atlanta? Or, cause I know they got... Copwatch. Oh, okay. Oh, on Instagram, yeah. That's right. All right. <laughs> and that's, so that's teardown.community at Gmail. Uh -huh. That's right. And then we have teardown what? 
the teardown dot org. Okay. Is the, the the blog. Org is the blog. Cool. Follow us on. You guys Instagram. have a Facebook. Uh, that's that's the Facebook is the Gmail? you can you can Gmail you can email us straight too but if you search that on Facebook that'll okay, bring it up. up the name is tear it down tear it down yeah tear, tear it, it all one word and then down okay because they won't it. let that's you just Facebook put name. the yeah, we have it's a Facebook. Yeah. Right. Tear we, it down. Also, what is, what also is don't it? use Facebook. <laughs> don't, <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Go on Facebook, but don't use Facebook. Dig that. What is the it? We just had to add that in because they wouldn't let us make the name just be tear down. Okay. Okay. Now, why not use Facebook? I mean, for people who don't know. Well, Facebook is communications infrastructure that's owned and controlled by our enemies. So it's like using a phone system that's owned by the people who don't want you communicating. Well, you better listen to this. Yeah, I hear this viewers. So, I right. mean, I, I think there's times when we could use Facebook or when maybe it makes sense, but we shouldn't be fooling ourselves mm -hmm. that this is something that's going to be liberatory for no, us. Oh, it's yeah, something absolutely. that we can count absolutely. on to, to allow us to spread our messages freely. Absolutely. It is controlled by our enemies. And mm. we've seen that in cases where there's a protest or something. Twitter's yeah. like, oh, sure, here, FBI. Like, yeah. no warrant necessary. Have yeah. all this information. Yeah. Or they'll just straight shut it down. Yeah. And right. if you built all your infrastructure and you were depending on that and then you get shut down, you know, now yeah. you're back. And, and I love and what I you know have to uh, commend you guys about is that you're doing work in the community. One of the things that kills me about the Facebook and this so-called social media is that the changes, the revolution or whatever the people are calling it, have been in a lot of instances and with a lot of people have been just limited to social media. We don't see as much community interaction anymore. We don't really see the people getting out there and trying to affect the change personally. You know what I'm saying? Just a lot of Facebook rhetoric. So I, I man, I really, man, applaud you guys for the work that you're doing. Um, what are we looking like on time? We got about three more minutes. Three more minutes. So we got the info. Something did you want to add to it, man? I know you something no, profound I, to say. I, you know, I, I, well, yeah, one thing I did want to, um, because Earthworm mentioned about the prisoner. I wanted to go back that being hung by that site. We actually have an actual account from prisoners because they're still debating whether Sandra Bland was, did she hang herself right. or was she taken? And so that would allow the prisoners in that facility to tell the true story of what, what, what happened because mm -hmm. we're still speculating on that, you know? So yeah, definitely that would. That's the thing. It's so easy for the prison officials to cover up their crimes because they, they have reprisals. Mm -hmm. If you come forward about um, whatever they're doing, they, they can throw you in solitary, they can That's do all right. this stuff. And then they just straight have suppressing that information. They, yes. can, they can limit your visits and your phone and everything. And now they have uh, this tier program in Georgia, which is a prison within a prison. So they can take right. away all your media. You can't have any photos. You can't have any books or magazines or anything other than just letters, they take away all your possessions. And if you're in general population, I, I applaud the people who are brave enough to look at that and realize that they could be facing an even harder time and still be willing to make that sacrifice mm -hmm. and take that risk. Right on. Right, right on. Yeah, the prisons w within America are like little mini totalitarian regimes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy yeah. for people to forget about that, but... Our government is imposing totalitarian control over people in terms of control over information and control mm -hmm. over, you know, a both access to communication and access to information in, right? Mm -hmm. These things are completely controlled. It's like, it's like living in, in a repressive regime. Yeah. And I think one of the most important lessons that folks on the outside need to take from that is the tools and techniques that the state develops for controlling prison populations they will apply to the rest of us mm -hmm. when it becomes appropriate, when it becomes convenient for them. And so when we, when we try to fight against control and repression in prisons, we're also fighting for our, our freedom on the outside because th our issues are connected. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to close out with this. Earth, Warren, Marlin, you guys were heard, heard about the uh, FBI against Apple, right? Where San Bernardino... Mm -hmm. You know, you had a Muslim couple. I always blame the Muslims, man. It was goddamn <laughs> Muslims. God I always blame the Muslims. God dang, God dang Islam. To, to the Muslims, man. I always blame the Muslims. God dang Muslims, boy. I tell you. <laughs> well, anyway, you had a couple that shot up. You know, they went to the workplace, shot them up. 
So now the police is like, well, you know, in order to finish our investigation, we have to encrypt the back door so we can get inside the phone. And Apple's saying, no, because if we create that, you're going to be able to get access to all the phones. Mm-hmm. So now that's tied up right now. I think we should get, so what's your take on that, Mark? I mean, Look, I th- a lot of people have been saying that Apple's doing the right thing here, right? Okay. That it's good for them to resist putting this back door in there. And... I mean, I think it's true that Apple is doing the right thing. I, I'm glad that they're doing that. But the reality is they've done the wrong thing many, many other times. Mm-hmm. And they will do the wrong thing again. And I think the larger problem we got to be looking at is, why is this Apple's decision? Why is it Apple's decision whether my privacy gets violated by the mm-hmm. government or not? Oh. Mm-hmm. It should be my decision whether my privacy gets violated Good point. by the Good government. Point. Good point. Good point. And so I think what we got to be looking at is not whether... Uh, whether Apple is putting a backdoor in their phone, but why does Apple have that power in yeah, the first place? Why is that even a question? Right. right. Well, my phone should be them. mine, right? Mm-hmm. Do we trust them to not, if, even if they tell us they don't? Right. right. And, and, so, and so what a lot of people are talking about these days is we need, we need open source software on our phones. Mm-hmm. We, need, we need the code that's running on our phones to be directly under our control. Right. Uh, because, because it belongs to us. It shouldn't be something that a corporation makes decisions mm-hmm. about how it works. Yes. And that's possible. You know, there's resources for that. The, the Android operating system is technically open source. Oh, yes. We can make these things happen. There's tools that we can use to encrypt our own communications in a way that neither Apple nor the government... Marley, you're trying to read. throw a monkey wrench into capitalism, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> if we want our society to, be continu- to continue to be free, mm-hmm. the, the only choice that we have is to take our privacy into our own hands mm-hmm. to make sure that we are the ones who decide whether our communications are private. What saying is that we should stand up and be fighting the uh, police as far as this... Um, I think, I think we all need to take a look at our phones yeah. and, and question, is it really doing what I want it, want it to, do, to do? Or is it doing I, what I, some company I, wants I think do. that was, man, that's a, 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 a good point. Why does, I like what you go back, I mean, it was simple. Why is that even a discussion that the feds are having with Apple? It shouldn't be a discussion, it should be the masses of people. It's our phone, it's our privacy. Why aren't we involved in discussion? This is a whole nother show. <laughs> this is a whole nother show, man. And we definitely, That's a we huge definitely issue. Get, yeah, 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 we, we definitely need that. to have 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 uh, Marlon and Earthworm back, and some of the other comrades, some of the other uh, absolutely people in the house, man. This is this has been great. But for coming from the written, we closing now. Um, we got two more minutes. I, I want to get Earthworm take a man. Let's do it. Can I add to that? What can it's, I add to that? Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's important that we all learn how to secure our communications, um, you know, learn how to encrypt your email. That way, you know, Google isn't reading your email and sending it to the NSA. Um, and learn how to have secure phone communications. There are apps now that you can use to encrypt your text messages. That way we're not putting our trust into other people or other so-called people, actually corporations, to be taking care of our privacy for us. Because when it comes down to it, they're not going to be on our side. Okay, we're going to have to do another show. Now you just opened up a whole other door, Marlon. Because yeah. just what you said about the Apple thing, we as the people should demand that hands off of Julian Assange. Hands off of Anna Stone. Mm-hmm. Hands off of Malia, god damn it. Hands off of Malia. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, we, we, I mean, the government works for us, right? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> right. right, allegedly. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, not only with the phones, I think we should be able to say, you know, hands off of certain people because... Mm-hmm. You know, I think Julian Assange has been locked up in that institute for three years now. Or longer. Snowden leaks were in 2013, so that's been three years. Hmm. Oh, and wow. Assange is before that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Assange is way before that. Yeah, no, I mean, as our society becomes more centralized around information mm-hmm. and, and computerization, I think that becomes uh, an area where we have to put a lot more focus in terms of what what does liberation within within computers and information and communication Look mean? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah. like you're talking about with Facebook, more and more of our world and our politics mm-hmm. are taking place there, right. and we right. got to be realistic about who's controlling that mm-hmm. space. That's and right. and and if we don't quite understand what's going on there, then we got to educate ourselves. Yeah. We got to like get the tools to be able to take control of it ourselves. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah. we sh- there's a lot that we could say about that, and Absolutely. and we should. And we're gonna have to, man. Yeah. And we're gonna, and we're gonna have them back. Tuned. Yeah, definitely stay right. tuned. This is your man Yang and Kruma. Black Sun. No doubt. I'm Marlon. I'm Earthworm. Coming to you with the Arena and Sensor. Check us out on YouTube next time. There again, man. Thanks guys for having us. And and we definitely look forward to the uh to another show.
And I and I enjoy having having us together because we had Earthworm on the Cop Watch, we had Marlon That's right. on the Anarchism. So you know, this coming together was was awesome. So I look forward to yeah. us doing coming together. I'm so together glad that y'all came out to our Man, place. This is what's happening with so the free store on the, in the front, you know. And they got the. Did you see the the thing with the bulletins on it in front of the teardown? No, oh, yeah, the board? Yeah, yeah, we got like board. a literature board. Yeah, got the yeah. literature board right in front of. I Man, I'm like, I'm impressed. I was just checking it out, you know. Color scheme is kind of freaky. On the house, but other than that, just, that's what you got. But there again, man, this is Arena Uncensored coming to you, man. I'm going to give it out, sit out with peace. Peace. We out.